Hey guys, today we're trying the Parachute Blue Wing Olive. This is in a size 16. And although this fly is typically tied with dry fly hackle, I don't have any. And I'm a little cheap. I don't want to go spend 35 bucks on a few strands. I've been using soft tackles lately to tie even my dry flies. So that's what we're going to be using today. I'm using an uh, Umqua size 18 dry fly hook with some olive 70 denier thread. This is UTC. And the first thing we're gonna tie in after we get a little thread base in is our tail. So for the tail, I'm gonna use the same material that I'm using for the actual wing, and that's just a Grizzly Dunn hen hackle feather. So I'm just gonna preen a few fibers, um, five or six fibers is plenty. So I'll preen some off. Um, I usually use a scrap feather for this and keep my tiny soft tackle feathers intact to use as complete ties for wings or collars or whatever I'm using those for. So I'll use a scrap feather to preen off fibers for tails. And we're gonna tie these in right on the top of the hook and measure them up to where they're just about, uh, I like medium long tails, so I keep them about as long as the shank of the hook, or maybe just a hair shorter. That's a little long, so I'm gonna press those up a little more. And that'll work. So I'm gonna make a few wraps back towards the bend of the hook. And once I get past the hook point, I'm gonna make a wrap underneath the tails. And this will just help keep the tails from fouling around the hook. Keeps them splayed up nicely. Adds a little bit of durability to them. And then I'll wrap back towards the tail tie-in point. So next we're gonna dub this body. So for this I'm using hairline olive dubbing. This is all of done dubbing. And I want to dub on a really thin noodle, as thin as you can, on, especially on these small dry flies. It's really easy to overdub it. So don't hesitate to pull some off and re spin it on. And make a couple thin wraps right near the tail tie in point. and then start building up a slide taper in that body. My dubbing came loose a little bit, so no problem to retighten it up. And I'm gonna give myself about two eyes width of space at the front of the hook to tie in the parachute. And for this parachute, I'm using the poly yarn that I actually use to tie indicators with. I like both the orange and the chartreuse color. Um, I used to tie parachutes with CDC, white CDC, gray CDC. There's a, there's a ton of ways to tie parachutes, but what I found is that a lot of times on the water, I would lose sight of even a parachute high-vis fly um, inside foam lines. The white and the gray definitely blended in more um, than my eyes could pick up. So I started tying these with really high-vis materials, so this bright orange, uh, fluorescent orange and the you know the chartreuse that bright green color really pop out on the surface so I want to pinch a pretty thin it's easy to have too much of a parachute and you'll know when you start uh, wrapping this if your parachute material wraps all the way around your hook shank then you need to thin it out a little bit you don't want it to build up too much of a bulk that's about as as heavy as thick of a parachute as I would go with. So I'll start by tying it right on top of the shank and then I wanna make some circular wraps just around the base of the parachute. And this is kind of an art because you wanna keep tension but you don't wanna to pull too much because you will pull the parachute down to the left or the right. And there's, like I said, there's a lot of different ways to tie in parachutes. This is, I think, the easiest way for me 
and I'll hold on to the parachute just to keep it standing up tight as I make those wraps around its base. And once I feel pretty good about it, it's got a little bit of structure there um, supporting it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap some more dubbing onto this thread and kind of cover up some of my wraps there. Just a really thin noodle will do. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and tie in my wing material. So again, the wing material on this is going to be another soft tackle feather. These are at the very base of this hen cape, so they're the smallest feathers. Um, they're about the size of like a down feather maybe. So I'm going to pick one of those. And at the bottom of the quill, I'm just going to trim off some of those really webby, schloppen type feathers and preen off about an eighth of an inch of that quill. And I'll use that open quill as my tie-in point. Make a few securing wraps. And normally I would want the, the shiny part of the quill facing down and the dull side facing up because it has a natural curvature. And I would typically want this feather to naturally curve up um, as I wrap it around the parachute. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's soft hackle, so it's not going to hold its shape as great as a dry fly hackle would anyway. So whether this feather is facing up or down when I start to wrap it, it's not that big of a deal. And these feathers are really delicate at the tips. So try to curb your frustrations if you're constantly losing it and make sure you have clean hackle pliers if I have any sort of material left over stuck to my hackle pliers uh, typically I don't get a good grip and I'll, I will slip on these ha uh, these tips of these feathers so I'll, I'll make usually at least two wraps and hopefully three if I can get three out of this that'll work and then immediately try to trap that tip And my tip and hackle pliers broke off, but that's okay. I have it trapped still with my thread. So I'm just going to keep tension on my thread and make some securing wraps underneath the parachute. So I'll pull those hackle fibers up and wrap right underneath in front of them and get that tip secured. So at this point, we are ready to whip finish. This is again where that, that 70 denier thread really comes in handy. You want a thin thread so you don't build up too much bulk, especially at the head on these dry flies. Uh, too much thread will slip down. If it's a really bulky head, it'll slip down and over your eye. And then the last thing to do is just trim up our parachute. So I think a lot of people when they're tying parachutes, um, they leave them too tall. You don't want too much weight up there, so keep it relatively short. If you leave it too tall, that's going to throw the, the balance of the fly off. So if you cast it, the weight of the parachute might cause the fly to land sideways or even upside down. Um, so just keep it a, a short parachute. It's pretty dense, uh, even though you know the material floats well and it spreads out well. If, it, if it's too long, it just adds too much weight to the top side, changes the center of gravity. So that's it, guys. Um, we're going to go give this fly a whirl on a, a nice overcast day, see how it does. Beautiful day, really. Light snow. <laughs> nice and overcast. There we go. That's a good spot. There 
There it is. I like when they put themselves on the reel. Nice. Not that you need to put trout on the reel, but I like to just so I don't get caught up with my line around rocks and twigs and stuff underneath me. Right in the corner of the mouth, perfect. You fish, really great spots right there. Love it. All right. Shoot, blueing olive right there. That's what's coming off. Right the corner lip, not bad. Healthy little brown. Back he goes. Get this fly dried off. right in front of me. Shorten this up. Yep. <laughs> it's a pretty deadly little dry, especially for these nice overcast days. Energetic little browns. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Nice. Decent fish. Yeah, healthy brown. Maybe just over a foot. Real, real pretty healthy fish. Take it right in the corner of his lip. Come on, open up. Sometimes they are pretty stubborn, but there we go. Back you go, buddy. Still on that uh, high vis parachute VWO. Nice. Oh, baby, this is lurking. That's some true sight casting.
healthy healthy brown all right back you go like a healthy brown. about tied for the fish of the day. Nothing huge today, but uh, this guy's really healthy. Took that VWO right there. And zapped. Let's see, he got a little wrapped up. Okay. Yeah. Nice fish. Really nice fish. Figure I'll finish the day off from a little perch. Nice. Alright, now I gotta come down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. BWO, I'm losing count, but just a little guy. Took it right in the top of his lip. <sighs> All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to do it for me today. I really hope you uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and like it and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it.